So dudes, it's Tuhu. Chiori's banner is about to expire at the time of me writing the script, so it's about time I got you the Chiori guide that I promised three weeks ago, and here it is. Chiori is our newest 5-star Geo character who debuted in Genshin Impact's 4.5 patch, and she's an off-field DPS who functions very similarly to Albedo despite having a skill that mechanically works a lot like Kutchings or all Hythems, which is why you might have heard or still might hear some people refer to Chiori as Geo Keking sometimes. This guide will give you an in-depth, nuanced understanding of her kit, a game plan, and team recommendations, as well as weapon and artifact recommendations. I'll also give an overall review of how strong I think Chiori is, and whether or not she's worth rolling the next time she shows up. Chiori is all about her skill. As I mentioned earlier, her skill is mechanically identical to Kuching's and Alhytham's skills. When you tap her skill, Chiori dashes forward and slashes the nearest enemy. It also has a hold version, where you can control the exact angle and direction that you want to send Chiori flying. Keep in mind that the hold skill still has that annoying hang time that causes Chiori to come back down very slowly, so use this only for exploration. For combat, just tap the skill unless you need to hit an aerial enemy for some reason, like the Aeon Blight Drake or something like that, but then again, against enemies like that, why didn't you just bring an archer? But this is where the similarities with the other two end, because Chiori's skill also deploys a doll near the location where Chiori dashes to when using her skill, and if there's already another Geo construct on the field from another teammate, or if a teammate puts down their own construct even after Chiori's used her skill, this will spawn a second doll. The dolls will attack any enemy within their range on their own. They hit hard, but they're slow, and they can't can't be destroyed by enemies. They will also hit shielded enemies, like Abyss Mages, while their shields are up, which is noteworthy since not all coordinated attacks in Genshin are capable of this, like for example Raiden's skill. The default range on the dolls is not as far as you'd hope. C0 Chiori definitely needs to keep an eye on how far away enemies get from them, and if the dolls aren't attacking, then Chiori isn't doing her job. So either avoid enemies that zoom around a lot, or take them out first before using her skill, since her skill has a very long 16 second cooldown, and so having to redeploy her dolls if they're out of range can take a while. Couple of notes about the dolls, the first half of Chiori C1 increases the doll's range, and from what I've been told, since I can't exactly, you know, test this myself, is that the effect is similar to what Miko gets off her own C2, which would be a significant range increase and mean that you basically don't have to worry about Chiori's dolls being too far away in most cases. Another thing is that although Chiori's skill can do AoE damage, in reality I found that it's pretty tough for them to actually do AoE damage. The problem, I think, is that the slashes that the dolls do when they're attacking are pretty small and usually only hit the enemy that they're targeting. Enemies would have to be, like, right on top of each other for the dolls to hit all of them, I feel like. This isn't like, in contrast, Raiden's skill that has such a big AoE that it can trigger bloom cores. Additionally, the dolls last for a long time, 17 seconds to be precise, and because Chiori's skill has a 16 second cooldown, this makes her one of the few non- Archon characters in Genshin that have a skill that has a shorter cooldown than its duration. So with perfect rotations, the dolls should always be out there slicing people up. Thanks to her first passive, Chiori also has the unique ability to quick swap to the party member directly after her in your lineup if you tap your elemental skill button again after using it the first time. This pattern that you see on screen when you use her skill the first time is a visual indicator of the window you have to use this quick swap ability, otherwise it'll expire quick and you can't use it. This means that if she's your point character, or in other words, if she's in your first position, the second character will come in. If she's second, she'll bring in number three. If she's number three, then number four comes in, and if she's the party anchor, or the last in your lineup, she'll bring it up top again, and pull in whoever's your point character. The best part of this quick swap ability is that the dolls do two extra attacks, specifically off your active character's normals, charged, or plunge attacks. It's only two attacks total, regardless of how many dolls there are on the field, per skill activation, but, while that doesn't sound like a lot, these attacks do hit just as hard as the doll's regular attacks, and since there are two dolls, they both use one of these bonus attacks for a great chunk of instant burst damage. And because the dolls sacrifice attack speed for raw damage, anything that you can do to make them attack faster, or give them more attacks in this case, is excellent. And so Chiori's quick swap perk is perfect for that, as it capitalizes on her role as an off-field DPS, and gives you some good bonus damage as a reward for playing her properly. What's interesting about this quick swap is that you can even do this in midair, and to my knowledge, this is the only way in the entire game for you to be able to swap characters at all in the air. But this would have been best given to someone like Shenyun, who actually buffs plunge attacks, so as it stands on Chiori, it's just a novel thing that she can do, and 
not really much else. And lastly, when she uses her skill but doesn't quick swap, Chiori will give herself a 5 second geo infusion that lets her do geo damage with her normals, charged, and plunge attacks. On their own, her normals don't have great scaling so she won't be doing much damage with them, even while geo infused, not compared to her own dolls at least. So unless you have a C6 Chiori, quick swapping is usually the way to go unless you specifically need Chiori's geo infusion for something. Chiori's elemental burst is much simpler since at C0, it's just a simple 360 geo slash that deals a decent chunk of geo damage and that's pretty much it. It does have decent range of its own and more importantly, it can also hit enemies behind Chiori, but on its own it carries no extra utility and serves purely as an extra source of damage that she can throw out as soon as she has full energy. However, this changes at C2, which gives her ult the ability to summon miniature versions of her regular dolls. We'll call them mini dolls. It summons them one at a time every three seconds after her ult is used, and the mini dolls only attack once before expiring, and they also expire on their own after three seconds if they don't attack. But the mini dolls' damage are also considered elemental skill damage, and so they will contribute quite a bit to the doll's overall damage output because, as I mentioned earlier, anything you can do to get more damage out of those dolls ramps up real quick. More importantly, this gives her ult an extra layer of usefulness besides just being a one-and-done damage pump. Think of it as a gun that shoots smaller guns that also shoot. Chiori's first passive is where she gets the quick swap and geo infusion perks from, and we've already gone over those. Her second passive, though, gives her a 20% geo damage bonus for 20 seconds as soon as a teammate puts down a geo construct. This means that not only do you want to run a geo teammate to support Chiori, but it's gotta be one with a construct like Zhongli, Albedo, Geo Traveler, and fun Funnily enough, Ito, since his cow, counts as one, and you want to set up their construct before you have Chiori swap in and uppercut the crap out of someone with their skill. And her third passive gives her party a 10% movement speed bonus if anyone on the team is wearing either a costume or any wing glider that isn't the default one. If I remember correctly, every new Genshin player gets the Wings of Companionship glider as part of the new player gifts in their inbox. So assuming that's still true, this means that Chiori technically has the best movement speed passive in the game because you can use it as soon as you start the game, assuming that you start with Chiori of course, and it's not dependent on the time of day like Dehya's and Rosaria's are, unless someone else in the game has an even better one that I'm not currently aware of. Due to all of the mechanics in her kit, Chiori demands a much more specific playstyle and game plan than the average Genshin character. First, she needs a team that she can work with. Again, she wants a Geo teammate with the construct, but she also needs them to take the field first so that they can put down their construct, then Chiori can go in, use her skill, and then then quick swap to another character. Out of the four options, Ito isn't ideal unless you want to play main DPS Ito, which is fine, but then that means you also want to take Goro for more support, and at which point you're looking at a mono Geo team with Chiori in it. So other than that, ideally you take Zhongli, Albedo, or Geo Traveler instead, but you're not using Geo Traveler because Dendro Traveler is goaded, so take your pick between Zhongli and Albedo. And second, thanks to her quick swap mechanic giving her more damage output, she wants to support a main DPS who mainly fights with normal, charge, or plunge attacks. Technically, she doesn't need to swap directly into your main DPS, you just need to remember to normal attack for just a bit to trigger the two extra attacks from the dolls first, before switching again in case your main DPS gets their damage from like their skill or their ultimate. But you will have smoother rotations if you do. And finally, you round out her team with either another off-field DPS or a healer. When initiating a fight, again, you start with your Geo Construct support first, who throws out their Construct, then switch to your characters who have off-field DPS skills, then to Chiori so that she can use her skill and deploy her dolls, then quick swap to your on-field or main DPS and use their ultimate while everything's on the field to maximize your damage cycle. Whatever team you use, keep in mind that it might take a bit of practice to get the rotations down perfectly because Chiori's quick swap ability is such a unique mechanic in Genshin. Let's quickly go over her constellations and I actually think they're hilarious. C1, as stated earlier, gives her dolls more range and makes it so that you no longer need a construct character specifically for Chiori to deploy both of her dolls, just any other Geo character will do now, which enables double Geo teams like Navia and Chiori to work. C2 is where things start to get crazy. Again, it deploys that third mini doll that I talked about earlier after Chiori ults that does elemental skill damage of its own, but this compounds with her C4, which basically does the same thing, but instead of her ult, it does this to her skill instead. 
meaning that a C4 Chiori should have up to like four dolls active at once that are all doing elemental skill damage onto enemies. And finally, C6 turns Chiori into a main DPS by buffing the hell out of her normals and reducing her skills cooldown by 12 seconds, meaning that she really does become a Geo Keking because she can spam her skill just like she can. In other words, C6 Chiori is a Geo Kuching who can also deploy her own small army of dolls that brutally murders anything Chiori even looks at. But but that's at C6, what does Chiori at C0 bring to the table now that she's a part of the roster? The most immediate impact she has, like I said at the beginning of the video, is that she's effectively a stronger Albedo. Both she and Albedo function basically the same. They both have off-field DPS skills that deal most or at least a big portion of their damage, and their ultimates are simple, DPS-only bursts that tack on some extra damage whenever they get it. The major thematic difference between them though is their ease of use. Albedo is the much simpler, much easier character to play. His gear is simple, his playstyle is simple, and you can toss him into any team you like, even into teams that technically have elements that Geo can't react with, like, I don't know, Animo and Dendro, because he has a passive that buffs Team EM after he uses his ult. Chiori is the exact opposite. She demands a specific teammate, and she has a lot of mechanics that you need to know, at least compared to other characters. But, if you're willing to put up with how demanding she is, and can give her everything that she needs, then what she offers is much higher damage output compared to Albedo, for what that's worth since at the end of the day, unfortunately, she's still Geo. One implication that I think most people have missed about Chiori, again for what this is worth, is that she is an indirect buff to Construct users. The problem with Constructs, one of them anyway, is that against bosses, they are extremely flimsy. The game immediately erases any Construct that your team produces if a boss enemy has to occupy the same space as a Construct. And since most rooms in Abyss 12 throw some kind of boss at you, most constructs are completely invalidated there. But as long as Chiori can use her skill while a construct is out on the field, both of her dolls will stay out there even if the support construct does get destroyed afterwards, meaning that Chiori can still make running a construct teammate worth it, though how much you care about that depends on how much you love Geo teams, which, knowing the Genshin player base, isn't a lot of you. But for those of you who do, for you Geo mains out there basically, you're the player demographic that Chiori is intended for from a gameplay perspective. And considering that we've gotten not one, but two Geo waifus in a row, in Navia and now Chiori, I imagine you guys have been eating real good these days, or at the very least taking whatever dubs you can get. For everyone else though, eh, you're probably better off saving for Arlequino, or maybe rolling for the Kazuha or Novalette banners right now if you don't have either of them yet. For weapons, since she plays a lot like Albedo, would it surprise you to know that Chiori uses the same weapons as he does? Cinnabar Spindle if you have it, and Harbinger of Dawn if you don't. And of course, Uraku, if you're lucky enough to have a copy. Chiori has three viable artifact sets, and in the order of worst to best, Nighttime Whispers, Husk, and Golden Trope. Nighttime Whispers is okay, it gives her attack which isn't ideal but still workable, and the crystallized mechanic that gives her extra geo damage is nice, but it does make you have to pay attention to picking up the geo shards. Husk is good, more geo damage and defense stats are always great, especially for an off-field DPS like her, but by far the best should be Golden Trope, because this set offers something that you just can't get get anywhere else, and that's extra elemental skill damage, which the game treats as its own damage multiplier. So ideally, you should give her 4-piece golden trope. Chances are you may have some good leftover pieces to give her already from all the farming you've done for a lot of the Fontaine characters so far, like Farina and Novalette, but you can run the other sets first in case you have some pieces there while you farm for better golden trope pieces. For main stats, go Geo Cup and Defense Timepiece, and pick between Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circlet depending on how your stats go. Remember that Chiori gets 19.2% free crit rate from her ascensions when you're building her. And for substats, go for attack percent, defense percent, and the usual crit stats. Again, she doesn't need much, if any, ER because her ult is so cheap, and it doesn't do anything other than add some more damage if she's not C2 yet. If she is C2+, plus, then make sure she has some ER, but not too much. Like, 20% sounds plenty enough. And that'll do it for this guide on Chiori. Hope you guys enjoyed watching, and perhaps even learned something new. If you did, don't forget to like the video, and subscribe for more Hoyaverse and other gacha content. Check out the stream over on Twitch and my socials down in the description, and thanks for watching.